Stay tuned and let's check out this Marvel Legends Hasbro PulseCon exclusive, Kang. Pow, and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today we are checking out this year's Hasbro PulseCon 2024 exclusive. It is, of course, Kang the Conqueror and his throne, aka his time chair. And I don't mind this one at all. The last time we got Kang was single packed in the Joe Fix It Builder Figure Wave in 2020. So it's been a little while, and obviously Kang has been in the media a little bit more. So people may have missed out, and this is a great way to display him. But also, he is not essential if you have that previous Kang. So I don't mind this as an exclusive. It's there if you want to upgrade and add a throne to your display, but it will take up a little bit more real estate. He does come with some interchangeable faces so you can create some Kang variants as well. So I do quite like this one. I think it's a good choice for an exclusive. So the packaging looks really nice. The artwork of Kang looks great on the front of the box with the Conqueror down here at the bottom. Kang the Conqueror again up top. If we spin it around, you can see some product images as well as those interchangeable faces. There he is sitting and standing on his time throne. But we also get a write-up that says, Kang the Conqueror travels throughout time, altering timelines and threatening reality on a journey to become the ruler of the universe. So as I said, looking forward to this one. Let's get it open and build that throne. So here we have Kang out of the packaging with his time chair and all of his accessories. So as I mentioned, you get those face plates, a couple of weapons, a blast effect, and some interchangeable hands. Now I've already started to piece the throne together. They come in big chunky pieces. It's easy to do. These are the sort of last three pieces that I'm gonna save and wait for the main event. First, I wanna compare this Kang to the previous version and check out all of his accessories because there are some subtle differences. Let's have a look. Let's start off with a straight up Kang comparison. So we've got the Joe Fix-It version compared to the Pulse exclusive version. Now, obviously the facial expressions are different. One of them, you can swap out the face plates. Other than that, from the neck all the way down to the feet, they are exactly the same in regards to sculpt and articulation. Double jointed pinless knees, single jointed pinless elbows. There is a ball joint at the waist and also a thigh swivel hidden within the boot. Honestly, it's a great representation of comic Kang. The differences are the colors, very subtly, but they are definitely more vibrant in the purples and greens on the new Pulse exclusive version. They're a little bit more saturated, a little bit more muted on the previous Joe Fix It version. Hopefully that's coming across on camera, but I assure you they are. If I spin it around, you can see completely pinless, exactly the same. The previous one did have that annoying uh, sort of barcode at the top of the thigh. The new one, thankfully they have got ridden of that. So I like that, but let's spin it back around and focus on the differences. And they lie within the face sculpt. So as you can see, different facial expressions. And again, the blues are definitely more brighter on the new Pulse exclusive version. The difference is you can swap out the face plates. Let's have a look. All you have to do is sort of put your thumb underneath the chin and sort of just pry the face plate off the actual head sculpt, which leave you with that sort of robot empty helmet looking void. And then all you have to do is plug in any of the interchangeable faces, nice and easy, like so. That was so easily done. This one is like an alien with the matching blue lines. I don't know what else to call it, but it is accurate to the comics. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then we also have the lizard head sculpt as well, which has like the beak on the nose and the yellow eyes, which I quite like as a variant. As you can see, look, he's got a beak, very alien-esque. So now you can see you have your two alien options and they are absolutely comic accurate, taken from the Council of Kangs in Avengers issue 292 back in 1963. So they are absolutely canon. And now you can see all three of your choices. You have regular blue face Kang, you've got the alien with the blue lines, and now you have your lizard face Kang as well. So if you really 
wanted to, you could army build these and create your own variant Kangs, your own council of Kangs in the display. I also appreciate that even though we got two blue faced Kangs, they both have a different expression on to again, create more options. So if you really wanted to, you have four different looks for Kangs combining the two figures. The only unfortunate thing is the Joe Fixit version doesn't have the interchangeable face plates. So you will have to buy extras of the Pulse exclusive. But I do like that it gives you nice comic accurate options. We also have more options with the hands this time round, as now we have a set of fisted hands, a set of expressive grabby hands, but only one trigger finger hand. So his left hand, you do get an extra trigger finger hand. And that is so he can hold his weapons, of course. So you do get one smaller blaster that fits snugly into the trigger finger hand done in sort of a silver with then that sort of pink dome on it. I'm assuming this is comic accurate, but don't know the reference to heart. But I like that we get a small blaster for Kang. But we also get this massive blaster gun cannon thing. Now this is absolutely taken from the comics, but I don't know what it's officially called. Maybe you can help me out in the comments below, but I do like this one. Again, it's got a subtle bit of pink. Other than that, it's like a good metal gray. It's got like this black piping up here and you can see he holds it nicely with the trigger finger hand. And then you can use one of the open palm hands to sort of rest underneath the barrel as well. So yeah, quite awkward to pose obviously because it's big and chunky and he only has a single jointed elbow but you can still get him in some nice enough poses. I think there's that one comic panel where he's literally holding it up like so. And I think that was the tease that they originally gave us, wasn't it, was this blaster. But it does have a blast effect as well, which is like a nice translucent blue uh, sort of shock effect, which does have a bit of pink in the middle as well. So that is a new effect piece we have not seen before. A little bit of pink sort of transitions out to the blue, done in a nice transition, uh, translucent plastic, sorry. Uh, but that fits into the cannon. The other gun did not have a hole in it, so you can't use it on the previous one, but you absolutely can on the bigger gun. So yes, multiple display options amongst your hands, your face plates, your weapons, but now we need somewhere to sit. So let's build Kang's throne, AKA his time chair that allows him to travel through space and time. Now, obviously it comes in a few different pieces so it fits in the box, but it is easy to piece together. I've left the last three big pieces to do on camera. We've got the big sturdy translucent base that you can't see very well on my white background, but I assure you it's there. That's gonna hold up the chair. This is the actual chair segment. Very nice. It has the hole here for the platform to slide into like so, no problem. Problem, fits nice and snug, nice and sturdy. And then at the back, you will see the actual plug for the translucent base that fits in, slots in like so. And there you go, nice and sturdy, nice and straight, Kang's thrown. Let me get the tape measure out so we can see what we are dealing with. So across, you are looking probably at about five inches or so across and height wise, it is about 10 inches off the ground with the display base. Now it does look a lot better with the display base. This is gonna be a nice centerpiece for your villain's display. Now the design itself is taken straight from the comics. It is very recognizable as Kang's time chair. I think the look was in the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon as well that some of you may be familiar with. But uh, yeah, definitely comic inspired. Let's get a closer look. Now it is mostly this gold plastic, which is a little bit marbleized, which I know some people don't like, but I don't mind it at all, especially when the plastic is imitating metal. It glistens nicely under the lights. We've got this sort of bronze trim as well, a few sculpted lines. And then on the back, you've got the blue for the sort of rockets or the engine or whatever it may be. A very nice curvature all the way around. And even on the bottom here, you've got a nice sort of bronze pattern, all sculpted as well underneath the platform. And then Looking straight on, you actually have the blue highlights uh, on the actual armrests because this is uh, a weapon as well. He can like shoot rockets, it has like a shield. Uh, you've got some blue on the bottom here, some blue on the inside, uh, and then you've got this nice translucent blue sort of base for the actual platform. And then the chair is nicely sculpted as it looks like it's plaid padded, but it is actually just brown plastic, of course. But uh, yeah, even still, very simple, but very accurate and very nice. So uh, let's get Kang sitting down. And you know what? That's not too bad at all. Now, of course, the articulation is a little bit hindered due to only having the ball joint at the waist, but the double jointed knees definitely help and you can get the feet flat 
on the platform as well as his arms resting on the side, even though they're only single jointed elbows. And he has got his sort of ass on the seat as well. So he's not like just hovering in the chair. He has got his feet firmly on the platform and then he is actually sitting on the seat as well. So hopefully that comes across on camera, but you can get him to sit nicely. Now, is it perfect? No, not at all, but will it work for display? Yes, absolutely it will. So I'm not mad about that at all. Does it look like Kang is sitting in his time chair? Yes, it does. And I think it looks great. As I said, this is gonna be a very nice display piece all the way around here. Again, it will take up a little bit of space on the shelf but it'll be worth it uh, on your villains display for sure i would like to see more thrones in the future i'm talking Thanos. i'm talking mephisto let's make it happen and if you don't want him sitting down then you can just stand him on the actual platform as i said it is nice and sturdy it will hold his weight and it doesn't buckle the actual stand either honestly it is very nicely put together i've also used the actual effect piece and sort of pried it in between his fingers so it looks like it's a power up effect in his hand also the actual gun trigger finger hand does have the up and down hinge in so it does display really nicely to be fair if I slowly try and spin it around you can see what I did there with the effect piece I just pried it in between his fingers so it looks like a power up and then of course you've got the big blaster that is comic accurate resting on his shoulder just like he does on that comic panel so honestly this is really really nice as I said I think it's a great exclusive as it's not like a brand new character locked behind an exclusive it's a character that you can can get otherwise but if you do want to get a deluxe version of this character then this is the way to go for sure uh, honestly I think people are going to be impressed with this one and there's a little size comparison compared to the regular Kang just standing on the ground next to the throne on the base so it is big it is intimidating let's have a look at those face plates sitting on the throne so in case you were curious there we have both of the Kang face plates sitting on the throne so if you buy multiple of these you can definitely create your own council of Kangs, but you're gonna need some space on the display. Here we have the MCU on the throne. Now, unfortunately, due to his hard plastic cape, you can't really get him sitting down without removing that. And that just means cutting it off, unfortunately. So that's not something I'm willing to do. But if you have already upgraded your MCU Kang with a, like a custom soft goods cape, then you may be able to get him to sit on the throne. Now, it is not MCU accurate. The design they choose was a little bit different, but just for display purposes, it absolutely works. You can get him standing on on the platform you're just not going to be able to get him sitting down due to that plastic cape but scale wise it looks absolutely fine so just another option to think about for a couple of cosmic comparisons here we have both a regular scroll and a super scroll just to see the size again on that flight stand it does make him stand out here we have another Hasbro Pulse exclusive. It is, of course, the Inhumans 2-pack with Lockjaw and Crystal. Stay tuned to the channel. Hit that subscribe button as I will be reviewing this next. I thought this would be interesting to see. It is, of course, Hawkeye on his Sky Cycle, which is also on a translucent stand. Now, his stand is very different as it has the ball joint and it allows you to sort of pose it a little bit, where obviously Kang, you can't really pose it. You can't move it from its position. You don't really need to, to be honest. But as you can see, they both sort of arisen to the same height. And just for another size comparison, here we have a couple of characters I've recently reviewed on the channel. We've got Death's Head and then the 85th anniversary Venom. As always, let's wrap up with some of the Who crew. Here we have Frogman, Tigra, and Hydra Bob. And of course, last but never least, here we have Captain Britain and Hal Fire Hank, who looks great in that throne. So final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Hasbro PulseCon exclusive for 2024. It is of course Kang the Conqueror and his time chair. I really like this figure and I really like this concept. There are a lot of other Marvel characters that have iconic furniture that we need in figure form. I know it sounds ridiculous, but honestly, it would really look great on display. I'm talking Mephisto, Thanos, Black Bolt, Black Panther, Doctor Doom, and many, many more. Let me know what other characters you think would look great sitting on their iconic comic book thrones in the comments below as hopefully Hasbro are taking notice but this is a great looking Kang if you need an upgrade or if you're looking to build some sort of council of Kangs this is something you can absolutely do with this figure let me know your thoughts in the comments below but hopefully this video has given you some good oversight and helped you make your own purchasing decision let me know what you think in the comments as always but if you like Marvel Legends then well <laughs> you are absolutely 
absolutely in the right place. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit all on the notification bell. Don't miss out on a video and please hit that join button, become a channel member, either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciate it. Support the channel beyond the channel. It is so, so simple. Check out a live stream or two. You can follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. I'm on Twitter or X at Dan Who Reviews. And I will, of course, see you on the next one.